When you first start off in photography, you tend to take an image and later see what you can do with it. But the more experience you get and the more you gain a vision of your own work, you'll start to pre-visualize. And that's to actually sense what the image should look like and then create it. Now sometimes I'll still take an image and later the inspiration will come, but increasingly the inspiration happens at the beginning of the process, not at the back end. So as I go to shoot, say, oh, some of the images we shot today down at the Devil's Golf Course, I'll already have in my mind what I want it to look like. And maybe that's partly because I have vision and partly because I have enough skills to know how to manipulate the image into what I want it to look like. But in any case, pre-visualization should be something you seek because it puts you in control. You're not just a photographer documenting. You're creating according to your vision. Okay, here we are right past the entrance to Death Valley. We've stopped because I've seen these great hills with all of these lines, these little valleys coming down and the sun's going down. And so at the top of each hill, we've got this great highlighted line. And then to add extra interest, we've got all these little white bushes that are highlighted in the sun. So by underexposing, I've got this great dark scene, all these white lines and these little puffy white spots all over the image. So I'm about two f-stops, I'm guessing, underexposed. And let's take a look at that and see what it looks like. Now I'm going to have to shade. I've got me a little lens flare going, so let me shade that. I'm going to be safe and bracket again. I'm going to take it up a stop. So now I'm at minus one f-stop. I don't like it as much, but it's good to have it. And I'll even go another stop just to keep in practice of bracketing. This is what a correct exposure should be. Now that's way too bright, so I'm going to stick with that uh, original shot, which is two F stops underexposed. And again, this is a classic example of a very, very simple image. There's nothing here but a few lines and a few dots of light, but its simplicity is what makes it so beautiful. And the contrast between those lines, those bushes, and the dark hills is what's so nice. In this shot, we don't really need a polarizer or anything, don't need a red filter. It's really just a straight shot, simple about form. Now we've talked about the histogram and how essential it is you check your histogram to make sure you've got the proper exposure because again the display could be set super bright or super dark leading you to believe that you're under or overexposed. The histogram doesn't lie though it tells you exactly where the light's distributed between black and white. Now in this shot I've purposely photographed this in a way that does not resemble reality. If you were to look at that with your eye, you'd see a, just a normal scene. But when you see my image, it's going to be very dark with these white lines going across following the hills. To do that, I've shifted my histogram clear to the left. In fact, the entire thing is stacked on the left side. You would normally look at that histogram and say, that's not right. I need to increase my exposure and bring more light in. That's what you would do if you were trying to create an accurate shot and you were trying to document reality but we're not doing that today. We're creating an image, creating an image, using my vision to say, what would I like it to look like? So I've purposely underexposed by two stops, shifted the histogram, and that's okay. I think this is a great example of an image that works in black and white, but wouldn't work in color. These hills have absolutely no color in them, and probably have very little color interest, but as a black and white, it's striking, it's impactful, and it just draws you in. So here's a great example of why black and white will sometimes work when color won't.